could justify you in Jesus' voice. <laughs>
but also anybody that wants to be part of that service let me know give us an email address or a phone number and we will send you a zoom link and we will have the zoom you know zoom up and running you'll be able to see us live we'll we'll see you okay you could be in, in, in involved in interactive teaching I'm, I'm looking forward to it I think a lot of people are, are looking forward to it already they've, they've contacted me and then when we're done teaching we're gonna have a Q&A session Q&A session and you know I love Q&A sessions yeah because I know if, if I if I don't know the answer I'll make something up. no 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 <laughs> if I don't know the answer I'll say I don't know the answer to that that's a great question but and of course, it'll be it'll be related to the, to the content of what we what we've gone over that night. Um, but if I don't have an answer, then I certainly will will dig into the Holy Spirit. And the next time we are together, I will have you know I will have an answer. And so we're excited for that. So if you want to be part of the live Zoom uh, interactive, okay, teaching Q and A, let me know how or where we can send you that Zoom invite invite to. All right. So now. We started uh, the last time we were together doing a, a teaching from Galatians chapter 2, verse 21. 22, uh, 21, 21. And we talked about how, you know, everybody or pretty much everybody has heard or knows or where it's found. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I was crucified with Christ. They all love saying, you know, we all love preaching that. All the preachers love preaching that. All they love teaching that. I have been crucified with, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who live, whatever. It's a great verse. It is. But one day the Holy Spirit zeroed me in on the next verse. Because what dying to self means, I just got this. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> I can't wait. What dying to self means, it's not up to yourself. Dying to, self is not okay. Dying to self means you've died to it being about yourself. That's good. What you have to do, what you need to do, your responsibilities now. You know, you have to make yourself a sacrifice. You have to make yourself an offering. I was crucified. It's no longer I who live, right? It's not about myself. It's about Jesus. That's amazing. I, I, I just got that. That just came. I just love it. So anyway, we started having a little bit of fun. A good time with verse 21. A little bit of fun with verse 21. <laughs> a poet and I didn't even know it. But anyway, Pastor Lori, read verse 21 again from Galatians chapter 2. Um, King James? Yeah, King James. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Wow. So we briefly, we went over what the word frustrate means. And we're going to go over it again because it's vitally important. It's worth repeating. Definitely. The word frustrate means set aside. It means disesteem. No longer esteem grace. Oh, disesteem. Wow. Neutralized. Neutralized. Grace. Neutralized. Who wants to neutralize grace? Very important. We don't want to neutralize grace. So now Paul's going to tell us how we neutralize grace, right? Neutralize. Disannul. This is amazing because the, the, the gospel of grace disannulled the law. But now Paul is saying this is a way that you could disannul grace. All right, disannul. All right. Bring to naught. Bring to naught the grace of God. Wow. Reject. Oof. And you know, this whole verbiage here is, is also repeated in Galatians chapter 5, where he talks about those who have reverted back to the law or doing or do-it-yourself system for righteousness, for right standing, you know, to, to qualify themselves before God, right? He says, I fear for you have fallen from grace. 
Okay, so that word fallen, I would imagine I didn't study that out, but it probably means close to the same thing as this word frustrate means. So now listen to what Paul is saying. I do not set aside the grace of God. I do not disannul the grace of God. I do not disesteem the grace of God. I do not neutralize the grace of God. I do not bring to naught the grace of God. I do not reject the grace of God. Listen, I'm not I'm not I'm not saying this. This is just uh, I don't I don't I'm not going to tell you that this is the Holy Spirit. This, but this is the thought that just came to my mind. Okay. So if we allow do it yourself preaching enter our souls, enter our ear gate, right? Or 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 through our eye gate where we have entertained you you need to you have to you must, you have a responsibility, okay? Mm -hmm. um, if when we entertain that and we accept that, is the fact of our entertaining and accepting that neutralizing grace? Could it be why? Well, why, is, why isn't God? Why isn't it happening? What? I, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is what Paul is talking about with this word right here. I don't frustrate. I don't disannul. I don't set aside. I don't disesteem. I don't neutralize. I don't bring to naught. I don't reject. Guys, this is why our message is you are, you can, and you have. This is why our message is you are as righteous as Jesus. This is why our message is you are at peace with God. You are fully qualified. No efforts, no works, no doing, period. Just by receiving, period. Anything you want to say while I get a quick drink? Wow. And, wow. Yeah, I, I don't want to frustrate, disannul. No, no. Uh, it's all about Jesus. <laughs> it is all about him. All about him. This... Acts chapter 17, verse 20, 28, it's in him. It's in him. I move, I live and move and have my being because I'm his offspring. I'm God's offspring. It's in him, you know. Wow. And so it went on to say, for if righteousness comes by the law, this is, this is, Paul. can you imagine what Paul Paul's saying here? Can you imagine Paul saying, listen, if righteousness, if right standing, if your qualification, if your qualification, if your peace with God, if you're being in a position of, of, of deserving of anything before God comes by, by your right, by your doing, by the law of Moses, by keeping laws, by keeping rules and regulations, by doing, by doing, but then Jesus Christ died in vain. Oh man, that that's amazing, isn't it? It is. And uh, I'm gonna get a quick drink. I think it's important that they remember what you always teach. Also, what was that? All of those rules and everything are in the Bible. Yep. They're all in there. Right. They, so preachers preach it from the Bible, but that doesn't mean it applies to us. Right. That And even Jesus right. preached some of that because he hadn't died yet. Different covenant. Right. This is saying right. Christ died in vain. So this is right. after he died. And this is why. Which is where we are. When we went through Col Colossians, it was so important to understand where taking the ordinances that were against us, that were contrary to us, obliterating them, mm. blotting them out, canceling them by nailing them to the cross. This is why Paul says, in Colossians, he says, nailing them, nailing them to the cross. They were contrary to us. They were against us, but he obliterated them, right? This is why... Paul says in, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, Therefore stand in the liberty where Christ has set you free, and no longer be enslaved to a yoke of bondage. And, 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 and liberty and free, it has to do with ceremonial and moral laws or responsibilities, not only responsibilities, but I forget what the word is. Like if you break a law, you got to pay. No, no more. No more restitutions. No more. It's, it's, it's done away with. It's gone. So anyway, 
The word righteousness, we went over that righteousness. It's dic I yos one. And it means, um, in the broad sense, the state of him or her who is as he ought to be. All right? If you think you need to do something or have to be something or have to work some way or this or that or the other thing, to enter a state of how you should be before God, guess what? You're there because of faith in Jesus Christ. Well, then you're not believing you're righteous if you think that you're Amen. not. Amen. So, wow. Amen. And you're frustrating the grace of God. You're frustrating the grace of you're God. You're also calling God like a liar because he's saying that you are then righteous. He's saying you are righteous. Yeah, wow. And you know what else you're saying? Christ died in vain. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. But you really didn't need you really didn't need to send him. I can do it. Oh my gosh. Is that a me? No. That's important. No, you didn't need to send him. I can do it. I, I, I Oh wow. Oh wow. The condition of acceptable being acceptable acceptable to God. A doctrine concerning the way in which a man attains a state of approval before God. This is the way to achieve approval before God. Faith in Jesus Christ. Mm. And then Colossians chapter 1 verse 12, you are fully qualified to qualify for all the greatness of your inheritance. Now, um. <clears throat> it also means uh, integrity, virtue, purity of life, rightness, correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting. These are all depicting of the righteousness we now live in and stand in because of faith in Jesus Christ. First of all, you cannot attain this righteousness by works. And so Paul is here saying, if you try to attain your own right position before God to qualify, then you have nullified, you have frustrated, you have made of naught, you have rejected the grace of God. And you are telling God you didn't have to send Jesus. That's amazing, isn't it? Yes. And so now what I wanted to do was, there's another, you know, um, study Bible, study reference Bible, study work that Lori and I look at every once in a while. And she's going to read verse 21 uh, from that. Just read uh, verse 21. Okay. It is an insult. But you, you, this is what you have to do, okay? I want you to say like this. It is an insult. Okay. I got All right? Because I know she's so sweet. <laughs> she's, so, she's so loving, lovable, pure. She would not say this to anybody. It is an insult. But you know what we're saying this to? You're saying it to the person who thinks they can become righteous through their own doing. Sorry. Okay. Let's go. It is an insult, an insult to the grace of oh, God man. to prefer, wow, to prefer Moses to Jesus. Wow. <laughs> That's a good way to think of it. Wow. To prefer Moses. Yeah, because that was a system prefer, of do it right, yourself, right. you know? To prefer Moses to Jesus. Mm -hmm. If the law could justify you, then Jesus wasted his time oh my goodness. dying your death. Oh, my goodness. That would reduce salvation to a ludicrous contest between your obedience and the obedience of Christ. And his reference is Romans, Romans 5, 19. 5, 19. So what this is saying is, wow. like, if, if you make it, if I make it, I, I'm not going to... When people make it about what you need to do, you need to obey, you need to obey, you need to do, you, 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 you need to work at it, you need, you, you, whatever. You enter, and you, and you believe that? You are now entering into a wrestling match with your obedience versus the obedience of Jesus. No, 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 no. I'm surrendering. In this wrestling match, I'm tapping. I'm tapping. Yeah, I'm tapping. Three times, I'm tapping. I'm done. I'm, I'm No, 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 no. It's all about Jesus. 
It's all about his obedience. It's all about faith in him, period. Now, why did the, the author of this work say um, it, it, is, it reduces salvation to a ludicrous contest between your obedience and the obedience of Christ? Well, look at what Romans chapter 5, verse 19 says. That's right there. Oh. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of the one shall many be made righteous. There you go. So what Paul tells us in Romans, it's that it's through his, through his obedience. It's through Christ's obedience you are made righteous. Do you understand that? Do you hear that? Yeah, this is, it's, it is through... His obedience that you were made righteous. Praise. Mm. Can I say that again? You can say it again. It was through Please. His obedience that you were made righteous. Yay. It was through His obedience that I was made righteous. Thank you, Jesus. His obedience. Guys, giving thanks. Why don't you read verse uh, 12 from Colossians, Colossians chapter 1. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Amen. Giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to qualify for such a great uh, inheritance. And so why? Because through the obedience of the one, through his obedience, we were made righteous. We are righteous. We fully qualify. And when it becomes a work, when man tells us it's about now we need to do, or you need to do, or there's effort involved, or you need to walk in obedience. Well, Paul says in Galatians, not Gal in, yes, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 21, you are frustrating mm. the grace of God. Mm. Repeat after us. Ready? I will know, ready? I will no longer frustrate the grace of God. Mm, no longer. No. Amen. Listen, we love you. We hope that this message has blessed you. Thank you again for all you do for us. Any closing words? I am. I am. I can. I can. I have. How? How'd you get there? Through Jesus. Through, through grace. Faith. Amen. Through faith. through faith in Jesus. Wow. That's awesome. We love you. And we'll see you, I guess, next week. Walk in your blessings.